Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of The Couch Crocheter. This is episode 89. A few FOs and an update on Thomas's friends. Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of The Couch Crocheter. I just wanted to go over you guys some things that I finished up for this week. And I also wanted to show you Thomas's roommates or his friends. First thing I'm going to start off with is I'll insert a picture here. It is Z's Lovey. That's who the pattern came from. Uh, I did do this out of a scrap ball that I actually made. Um, I think Matt's blanket out of. I think that's the same color. It might not be. Um, but it is a scrap ball and I matched it with the gold in the owl's eyes. Um, I thought that I lost this owl because I picked him out and then, um, I started the lovey and then I finished the lovey and then I went to go put him on him and then I couldn't find him. Oh, I forgot to tuck in my end. Yikes. Um, then I couldn't find him, but I did find it again. So I went off of the gold in the owl's eyes and his beak. And if you look at lift up the lovey. Um, he has cute little wings, um, but his feet are also gold. So I went off to the gold in that, and I wrote down that I used... I'm sorry, guys. It's freezing up here tonight. We are supposed to get um, frost overnight tonight. Um, and I do not believe that they have turned on the heat because it has been, like, you know, pretty nice out. <laughs> so it's freezing up here right now. Uh, let's see. Owl Lovely. Um, so I wrote down that I used 170 yards and this was, um, Michael's brand, um, not, just not enough. What is it called? Do, 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 do. Oh, uh, never enough. That's what it's called. Never enough. Um, it was a big, huge skein and I think that I got two projects out of it. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, I don't think that this is the one that I used for Matt's blanket. This was different. Um, so yeah, I got him done. So here he is in his lovely, uh, lovey glory. And I will put down the link down below to Z, um, to how she starts and makes, um, her loveys. Uh, so the next thing that I got done, um, is I labeled it purple washcloth. Let me see what I wrote down for the yardage. 120 yards. Okay, so I was looking for something mindless to do. And I do believe that I was up here working on the mandala blanket. And I think that's where I got the idea for this bobble stitch. So all it is is a washcloth. Um, and the um, yarn that I used for that was... Premier's Just Cotton, um, and it was just called uh, Purple. Um, so I did a chain of, I don't even remember how many, and then I did a bobble, uh, chain one bobble, chain one bobble, chain one bobble, and then flip it and then do the same thing on the other side. And then the outside row, I do believe, is just two rows of half double crochet. And I'll insert a picture of it here on the back of the couch and how it looks. And again, I got the inspiration from um, making the mandala blanket. I do believe one of the rows that I just completed um, was this bobble stitch. So here it is up close. So I got that one done, and I also see that I need to tuck in an end here. So that one's done. So guys, the next washcloth inspiration came from Annie's Crochet Two Hour Dish Cloths, and the person who wrote the patterns is Darla Sims. I've been working my way through this book. So far, I have done uh, the Wee Bobbles, the Slant Stitch, which was a, another purple one that I did. Um, and now the one that I'm doing is the Flying Shells. Um, this calls for a number four weight yarn. 
I used a size H hook, and I believe in the last washcloth, I also used a size H. Oh, and for the lovey, I used a size J um, crochet hook. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, so it called for 122 yards of the... Um, solid color and then 98 yards of the ombre so I don't know exactly how many yards I used um, I'll go over it with you what I have left but um, let me tell you so I did finish it out of this book um, and let me tell you as soon as I started doing it I noticed that it has a very um, close similarity to a stitch that I already know and I learned it from, and I'm sure that there's a hundred other people out there that might have the same stitch video, but I learned it from Krista at the Secret Yarnery. Now I'm going to put her link down below only because it is the same stitch. Um, you don't necessarily have to buy this book in order to do this particular washcloth. She calls it, and I know it as the drunken granny. Um... And it's the same thing. It's the same exact thing. Uh, so I'm going to insert a picture of it here on the back of the couch. Uh, what I used for the turquoise is the Premier's Just Cotton. 104 yards, 85% cotton, 15% polyester, medium size number four. I got this at the dollar twenty-five tree. <laughs> uh, that's what I'm calling it from now on. Um, and again, I use an H hook. It, it recommends a I hook. This is called turquoise. I'm going to guesstimate. Let me see how many yards. This has 104 yards. I'm going to guesstimate that I probably used 80 yards to do the washcloth itself. Because I still have a big chunk left. Maybe even 70. I think I used more than half. I'm going to go with 70 yards and then I need to mark down in the blue book when I'm done this video. So then I've also followed the same pattern and the outside was um, single crochet and, you know, have X amount of stitches all the way around, which then I had to do math and figure out how many stitches need to go in each hole in order to make it even. And then it's a classic V stitch where it's a V stitch. Um, skip one, V-stitch, skip one. This particular pattern's V-stitch was um, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Um, so then I did that all the way around, and it said to fasten off. Now, I also do love this stitch as like a shawl or, um, you know, a shawl. <laughs> I wouldn't do this as a blanket because the holes are too big. I would do it as a spring shawl or a fall shawl. Um, but I'm not sure that I would necessarily use this stitch as a washcloth. Um, guys, I'm just finding that I believe, and it, you know, it looks the same in the magazine. So, and it was the same, you know, holes in the other gra drunken granny projects that I did. Um, I'm just finding that the holes are just too big. It just doesn't have a lot of, um, scrubby power, I feel. <clears throat> yeah, I do love it. I will probably do this stitch again because I do love the Drunken Granny stitch. Um, but I do not think I will be using this particular pattern for another washcloth. And it has nothing to do with Darla Sims. It has nothing to do with Annie's Crochet or how wonderful this, this book is. And again, it is called the Two Hour Dishcloth. Um, I believe I got it. I don't even know. I don't remember where I got it. I couldn't tell you. Uh, but you can find it, I'm sure, at like Michael's or Joanne's or, um, you know, Amazon or Thrift Books. Thrifty Books, I think it's called Thrifty Books. Uh, so that dishcloth is done, and I will not be using this particular pattern for another dishcloth. I might use it as like a table runner. I think that'd be really pretty. 
Like I said, the last ones that I did was um, a uh, rectangle shawl or a wrap, I should call it. And then I did one where they showed me how to do this in a um, over the shoulder triangle shawl. So I did do this stitch already before, but I know it as the drunken granny. They call it, what is it called? The slanty, hold on. Oh, flying shells. And the next one I'm kind of excited about, um, this one is called ruffles. This one looks pretty groovy. So I'm excited for the next one. So I've been working my way through this book, so that's done. So that is all I have for my finished objects that I can show you. Now, my next video is going to be um, the cardigan that I'm working on from Pamela's Adoring Crochet. She calls it the Essentials, uh, the cro Crochet Essentials Sweater is what her tutorial video is called. And again, I'll link that down below. Um, I have been working on that very steadily. I'm working on a secret project that I cannot say anything about. And last night, no, today, when I was up here earlier, um, I started March's, nope, April's, April's slippers. So I've been busy. <laughs> Yay. I think I got my Crojo back. <laughs> Um, so guys, that is all I have to share with you. I am going to do a Melody Bee Tie reading today. I do believe I need some um, daily meditations on the path to freeing my soul. It is Melody Bee Tie, as I just said. The book is Journey to the Heart. And we are on February 9th. Keep your heart open. Keep your heart open, even when you can't have what you want. It's easy to keep our heart open to life's magic and all its possibilities when we have what we want. It's more of a challenge and more of a necessity than ever to keep our hearts open when we can't have what we want. Even on the best journey, things happen. Plans change. Things swift, I'm sorry, shift and move around. This shifting and moving causes doors to close, relationships to end, blocks and frustrations to appear on our path. For now, that is what we see. For now, what we know is disappointment. We can't have what we want, and it hurts. When that happens, our tendency may be to shut down, to close our hearts, forget all we've learned. Keep your heart open anyway. Ooh, okay. Consciously choose to do that. Yes, you can go away, you can leave, you can shut down, but you don't need to. Now is a turning point. If you choose to open your heart, even when you can't have what you want, miracles will unfold. For now, remember this. Even though you don't have what you want right now, keep your heart open anyway. Later, you'll see more. You'll see how it worked out. How it needed to be just so. So guys, as I was reading this, I did insert the pictures of Thomas's friends. I did replant the three beans that came up and most of the tomatoes that came up. My carrots are doing good. Basil's doing good. The rose tree that I thought, the rose bush that I thought that had died, that I froze, came back. The one that I bought to replace it has not sprouted yet. <laughs> so, or I guess budded, I should say. Um, so I am still great. I'm hopeful that that will sprout. And I'm still hopeful that some of the other seeds that I planted will still do something. And if not, I still believe I have time to replant them. 
everything except for the ground cherries. I do not have any more seeds for the ground cherries. I only had five seeds from the begin with. They were um, seeds from last year that I took from a ground cherry that I thought that I could hold on to and plant this year and they would grow. And I don't think that that is going to happen, unfortunately. So that might have to wait till next year's planting season when I actually buy seeds for the ground cherries. Uh, so guys, that's all I have for you. Thank you so much for stopping by. Be safe and stay groovy. Bye.